Thanks for listening. <laughs> Mike is my goat. Do you feel me? Do you feel me? So scary. Do you feel me? I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting thing, the whole titling thing and all that crap. I mean, there was that thread on the forum where they were talking about whether chicks will listen to our show or not. Right. And, and you know, I, shoot, I should let you talk, but I, I can't. Our show has an unwieldy, odd title. Yeah. And I know we've talked about it before. There are probably people that are like, oh, Steve, what the fuck is a Dune Steep? Sorry. Uh, bleep the part where I say Dune Steep. And, and they're like, I'm not going to listen to this. I don't know what a Dune Steep is. Where is these voices coming from? <laughs> but, that, but that was a decision that you made that we've stuck <laughs> with. And I think we run with it. Trying to make, and maybe not all of them, maybe none of them are amusing, but trying to make definitions for what Dune Steve means and all that stuff. I, I think we've done the best we can to turn that possible negative into a positive because there might be people out there that, are, you know, it's like, oh, all these podcasts, Dune, Dune Steve, what is that? I'm going to click on it because I don't know what it is. I don't know. There's no way of knowing because the people that don't listen to us don't listen to us. They're certainly not going to comment on the show. True. Okay, say what you were going to say. Oh, I was just thinking it's interesting because, you know, we have a few female listeners that comment on there and stuff. And there's several people who have talked about how they've tried to get friends to... And, and there's a lot of different things that they mentioned, you know, little factors. There's the fact that we're speculative fiction. So we're not necessarily your straight up standard. We're not a mystery podcast. We're not a romance podcast. We're not a literary fiction podcast so you know the folks that generally like that kind of stuff aren't going to try us out because there might be robots or lasers or unicorns or something in our stories but not werewolves we haven't had a werewolf story yet have we we will did we not do that story where there was the old woman at the oh red, yeah red we did have a werewolf and story. she turned into a werewolf yeah that was an abby Hilton that was story a- i'm trying to think of any uh, any other thing that we didn't include we did finally do two zombie stories we did we ever do a vampire we did sleepless afternoon which is a vampire story and Uh, then the the conversation over dinner where it's like have you ever considered having yeah that was where we were saying we had a vampire story but we didn't really because there was never actually vampires in it they were just talking about becoming vampires and so we kind of joked about how we didn't actually have a vampire story what's something else that's a common trope we could say we haven't had or is there we have had ghost stories right because there was the one with the motel with the ghost of the we've had i think more than one ghost story we had the shortest we had jason sanford's one where the main character that just observed everything was a ghost bible maps maps of of the the bible Bible. we've had plenty of aliens Um, final exam was an alien yeah Uh, vacation what was that one called how about mad scientists have we had that i guess the the one where the guy cut out the part of the brain that registered oh, right. love. That would be a magic, because yeah. that was Norm Sherman. Yeah, that story was terrible, though. I don't know. We well, it was an anti-Valentine's Day story, and you're pro-Valentine's Day, so go F yourself. <laughs> All right, forget it. We're totally off track, and we don't need that. Thank you for listening to our outtakes. Okay, so on the forum, there was more than one person that had tried to get their significant other. other, other their significant other to listen Right, I hear you. And I still have to record a story after this. That they tried to get him to listen to the Dune Steve, and it just it didn't work. Either because our, I'm sorry, my voice is incredibly grating, or it's just that it's not their thing. Speculative yeah, fiction. Yeah, speculative fiction is like strike number one. And on top of that, there are some people who love speculative fiction, who would read it all the time, but because it's audio... They don't like that, and so they won't try it there, too. So it's even, uh, you know, it's, there's extra layers of difficulty in trying to share it with people. Well, and then, on top of that, there's us talking at the end, which would turn off almost anybody. So that's three strikes right there. Yeah, so we're out. Uh, but that second one, that's going to be the deal breaker for every podcast. If right. we can't listen to audio, if they don't like it. And, and you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever told you, my good friend Jeff says that if you've listened to an audiobook of a book, you haven't really read that book. <laughs> he has a real problem with listening to stories, listening to podcasts. But in his defense, he said that there's only one podcast that he actually does listen to week after week. 
And of all of the millions of podcasts, there's only one. Garrison Keeler. And yes, that's Lake Wobegon Days by Garrison Keeler. I uh, knew it. That's the only one I listen to, too, it turns out. So uh, so anyways, yeah, there, there's those... We can't overcome that second one, but the first those, one... Barriers to sharing, and you know, I, 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 have, I can't get my wife to listen to the show that I make myself because of several of those problems. She hates listening to stories read out loud. She will not listen to audiobooks. She only will read them. Why? I don't know. I don't understand it. She just doesn't like it. I think she has a hard time paying attention to it. Okay, and you know, that's, um, that's understandable. I'm not sure really they're... what the deal is. I think they're much harder to follow. Especially if it's something complicated with like foreign names or big words that you don't understand, lots of technical stuff. To me, that's really hard to follow. Yeah, and, there's certain stories that are much better read when you can flip the page back and say, wait, no, what was the deal? And you can go back real quick and check it out. And, um, and but, you you had listened to A Game of Thrones by George R R R R R R R R R R R Isn't that how Mork would laugh? I don't know. <laughs> you you have listened to that or you have I it? have it but I haven't listened to it yet. Oh okay. I am so glad I didn't try and listen to an audio of that. Yeah. The book was so dense and complicated and uh, it was a hard read and I would bury one finger in the glossary at the end that tells all the family and who's related to whom and what the hierarchy is and all that stuff. Every time I saw a name that didn't wasn't one of the main three or four, I would have to go back and say, okay, who is that? Oh, yes, okay. And I continue reading. And thank goodness he put that in there. But in an audio book, unless the reader is fantastic with doing different voices and, and modifying his or her way of speaking for every character, I don't know how you could follow it. I, I just hmm. don't. It's, it's, it's yeah. too much. I think it was Abby Hilton who said that I shouldn't listen to it in audio, that I needed to read it. And that's the reason why I haven't gotten around to it yet is because I don't have a lot of time to read, unfortunately, with my eyes. But with your eyes, you can... Yes. With my ears, I can do a lot because I have a lot of time stuck in my car and I can get through like a, almost a book a week depending on how big it is. Not obviously a George R. R. Martin book because those are gigantic. But uh, how many discs would that be? I'm sure it's in the 20s. To me, that's too daunting a task. When I go to the library and they're like Tom Clancy books that are in the 20s, 24 discs, you know, 28 discs or whatever. I just, I can't. Hmm. That's well, too much. Harry Potter was that way. And Jim Dale made it a delight. Okay, but not everybody is Jim Dale. And, that uh, guy, I can, it's been a decade and I can hear his voice for Hermione in my head right now, just thinking about it. He is so memorable and so good at that. And he's consistent too. I mean, if I were a professional audiobook guy, I would aspire to be like Jim Dale, as good as him. And I've thought many, many times if I were professionally doing a book, how would I remind myself what voice I've got for each of these characters? Somebody who might not show up for 80 pages, which has got to be like three or four hours at the very least of reading, right? I, I have no idea how long it would take to read something that mess. I would think probably the best way to do it would be to record a small snippet that you could play when you need to remind yourself and just have it there. Ron, Hermione, Harry, Dolores Umbridge, etc. And then, you know, when you get to another line and you can't think of it, you just double click on that and it plays it real fast. And you go, ah, yes, okay. And then you're back to it. They're probably not in a vacuum, too. They have other people. Yeah, they'll have say, a producer. Oh, you know, I've got a recording stuff. of that. Or it was, that's not quite, gosh, I don't know. How do these things get done? Because I listen to audiobooks, not like you, but I listen to at least two a month, one every other week. And I'll hear like mispronunciations or I'll yeah. hear miss words, you know, where they say the wrong word, where clearly the text meant one word, but they said the other. And I just, I wonder, well, isn't there somebody paying attention? Isn't there somebody going along like a script supervisor? Right, in reading along with them, like when me and you do it, where one of us is reading, the other one is talking. Yeah, you know, it's funny that, I don't know. I actually heard an audio book and it was the Jim Butcher... Uh, Dresden Files. Yes, the first Dresden Files book. I listened to the audio book and there was a mistake left in there. Not just he said the wrong word when he meant another word. It was he messed up, went back, 
started over on the sentence and it was still in there. Huh. So it was like a friggin' podcast, you know, where you sometimes run across those. Not on our podcast, but... <laughs> you know, and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is a professionally produced... This guy must have got a fair chunk of cash to do this reading and... Even this, if he got a dollar an hour, that's more than we got. Uh, okay. Seriously. And we can proof listen yeah, to was, our podcast. Yeah, I was kind of amazed by that, but we were talking oh about... My gosh, how did we get on this How subject? people have a hard time getting... Erections, ...significant yes. others... What I do is I to think... ...to talk of, about, uh, to listen, to try out things like the Dune Steve. I guess some... Speculative fiction is an interesting beast because it's not necessarily aimed at a gender. Certain stories are for a certain gender, whereas others are for the other or much more neutral. Like Ender's Game, for example, is a boy book. It's meant for men, for males, for penis-wearing individuals. Okay, let me interrupt, though. Is Hunger Games a girl book? It's got a female protagonist. The stuff is told from her point of view. There's a love triangle or <laughs> tetrahedron in there or whatever. I never a for trapezoid. a second felt like, oh, I shouldn't be reading this. This isn't for me. It was like it was as captivating to me with my Y chromosome. I, I nearly said with my penis. With my Y chromosome as it, it was to my sister who, who just ate it up and as far as I know doesn't have a Y chromosome. Why is Ender's Game alienating to your wife? I, I'm, I'm not going to – because nobody else in America – who's female would read Ender's Game and not like it. So I'm pointing the finger of shame <laughs> just at, her. at your wife because I've never met anybody who did read Ender's Game and didn't like it. Huh. She didn't dislike it. She just wasn't, you know, oh, that was so great. Like, I still look back at reading that when I was a freshman in high school, I believe, and just going, oh, this is so great. It's this reading experience of my amazingly long life so far. It's the second book that I've read. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, wait, wait. But didn't you read Lord of the Rings in high school? <laughs> wait a minute. I thought we retired that because friends started ripping it off. It becomes so ubiquitous. Oh, come on, man. Let's bring it back. Let's bring that and announcer men saying, uh, no, not, somebody would say, cue the sad music. Oh, yeah. We need to bring that back. Okay. There's... I felt the exact same way. I remember where I was <laughs> when the big twist happened at the end of Ender's Game and how I felt. Dude, I, I don't know. That was a – that, that word again, seminal experience. You are but, so into but, semen. But what is the deal? Well, I consider going to the Navy. And, <laughs> but, you know, that's a male-centric word. Is that a sexist word to say that? <laughs> can, a, can a woman have a seminal experience? No, they have a vaginal experience. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But I, I think the root word of that word is that's the seed from when right. something springs. And so that's universal to yeah, all yeah, no, it's life. Fine. We're uh, not discussing the, the sexism of the word seminal here. <laughs> We're discussing well, we are sexism, kind of in, sexism in speculative fiction and stuff. And, and I was going to say that it's not necessarily – I mean you can, you can say maybe it's not. I think – I don't know what it is. The elements that are in – the Hunger Games that help it to appeal to women as much as it does to men, some of them must be missing from Ender's Game. And Ender's Game doesn't have it doesn't have a love, love interest. interest. But killing people for others' entertainment or whatever is yeah, that so is very much guy, a boy I thing. I don't understand how that doesn't turn people off. And when that movie comes out, it'll be interesting to see how much the advertising focuses on that. Or whether they're like, you like Twilight. This has two guys that like the same girl in it too. Except for our girl is actually attractive. I don't I don't know. It'll be it'll be fun we'll to see. We'll have to see. I don't know. There's there's some books that I think in speculative fiction that are more for girls than guys. Although Example. Well, I was thinking like the time traveler's wife is uh, Because of the title? Would a guy We'll go to a movie movies. called that had Traveler's wife in the title. <laughs> well, I see that title no, has I, always vexed me. I because, think it's because of how much they focus on you know the the females 
perspective you know they, they have the whole wanting to have a child and having trouble and those kind of things that aren't things that guys necessarily feel they do a pretty good job of giving you the other side and making it interesting to both folks but i think it leans more that way it's one of those things that's kind of more meant for one than the other but you know like we said the ender's game can appeal to both as well as i, I loved the time traveler's wife and i actually introduced my wife to it who also loved it in this case but she didn't absolutely love Ender's Game the same way. And, you know, the reason I is think... Is it the love interest thing? Is it that because Time know. Traveler's Wife is a, is ostensibly a love story with science fictional elements in it rather than the other way around? It could be. those. Uh, there are things that appeal more to some people than to others. I don't know. I think that Ender's Game is a boy's book, especially, is because it's it reads almost like you're reading a sports biography or something we have the dragon army and they're going out and they're fighting their wars and winning and moving up in the standings and okay those kind of things that really appeal to boys and the competition and all that kind of stuff is what the whole thing is about and you know improving and moving up and all right but have, have you seen mend it like beckham uh-huh two female protagonists the two main characters in that kira knightley and parman de nagra how do i know that are <laughs> know. female is that alienating to you as a guy? Is that potentially alienating to your son who likes soccer but might not like Parminder Nagra? I, I don't know. You know, we've all heard the story, or, or you and I have heard the story, that initially J.K. Rowling wanted a female protagonist for her series. And somebody somewhere, I don't think it was a book publisher because there wouldn't have been a book publisher at this, right, this yeah, point, she was... said, no boy will read a book about a girl. No boy will read a book called Harriet Potter. And so she was like, okay, well, let's throw a Y chromosome into it. Would? Okay, I, I mean, I hate that title. I, I, I hope we can still be friends after that. But uh, I hate the Harriet Potter thing. But if it were called Harriet Potter, would it have been a phenomenon? Would it have captured the imagination of millions and millions of children? Would it have made billions? Would it be as beloved to you and me and... I almost said our children. As far as I know, we're not in Vermont. Are we? Would <laughs> I'm it the still, only one that has children would, here. You have nephews. Would it be as beloved to your children if it were Harriet Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? To be continued. <laughs> you know what gets my goat? That this show is produced under your Creative Commons 3.0 license. Why would you bother? And then on top of that, there's us talking at the end, which would turn off almost anybody. So that's three strikes right there. Yeah, so we're out. But admittedly, the second strike, that's an overarching... That's that, the, that's why a, don't you just twist the leg of that thing so that it won't tip on you a fourth time? Oh, I don't know what you mean by twist. Oh, there. That's going to make a difference? Yes, when that leg is underneath the arm, it has more stability. Ah, 